is Jenny with Norna Scraps. Um, I recently posted on my blog uh, how I created a little applique fish. I've had several questions, several requests rather, for the technique I use to create the eyes. Um, when you use embroidery, there are many ways that you can get movement into your design. In other words, you can give it dimension, you can make it look real. One of the ways you can do it is by having the stitches or the appearance of the threads and stitches follow the line of your design. And that's what I've done with these eyes. Let's get busy and I'll show you what I mean. First thing I did to create the eyes was go to the library, selected it, and went to Shapes 1. I then brought in a circle. It's a little big. I'm going to go ahead and size it down because my eyes aren't that big and I'm going to bring it over here. Yes, just one circle at the moment. You can see in my objects menu, I have the one. So now I am going to select that circle, I should have kept it selected, and copy and paste it. I'm going to use the key clicks Command C and Command V on my Mac. I know for a fact, even though it appears that I've got one circle, that I have two. If I check my objects menu, there's two of them up here. The second circle I'm going to make sure is still selected, highlighted, and I'm going to size it down just a little bit. It's going to become the pupil of my eye. And I'm going to make it slightly more oval and drag it to where I want it. Perfect. Let's zoom in for just a moment on this particular set of lines. It is not a, an embroidery design yet. And that, it looks, that looks exactly right. I am now going to go to the Create side of my program and I'm going to actually be using this draw, a column, and it selects my column stitches. And I probably could have selected satin column and it would have been fine. What I want to do is, uh, this is the right left column, I used to call it the up down, it, Anyway, there's two alternating points for every segment that you need to put into your design. You're going to see what I mean in just a minute. But think of it as an AB and always returning to the side that you started. Let's get, let's get to placing these stitches. I'm going to begin. Oh, before we do that, this is going to be actually the guideline for where my inner stitches are going to go. I'm going to go slightly into that circle with this set. This is I'm making the white part of the eye. And my outer aspect is going to go right along this line. Okay, let's I just once and one more time. Inner aspect, outer aspect of the eye. Let's place our stitches. Place, place. So the inside place. And now you're going to see when I place my second point, a line that extends across. Right there. That's going to be the direction of my stitches. And I want it to kind of follow the circular movement of my outer aspect. Uh, uh. So I'm going to have my line, my direction of my stitches changing direction a little more frequently than I would in many cases. I just keep placing my points in, out, always returning to the side that I started on. And now I'm going to close up. Okay, click off the design. Whoops. Right click off the design. And that's kind of what I'm going for, but I don't want it black. I'm going to have it white. But just for visual purposes, let's leave it black. You can see the directional lines. And I can move them if I want my stitches to change direction slightly, if I'm not totally happy with it. And it actually doesn't look too bad. Let's move this one to go straight up. Okay, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to select 
my nodes because I'm going to make sure that every, they're rounded, okay? Because if you look really closely, right, let me zoom this in right there, right there, you can see that that, I'm not following the outline and it's not very circular. So, let's go down here, click on the node, and you can see the Bezier, Bezier handles extend. And all I'm doing to get it to arc out is to pull the handle away from the node, out and away. I'm going to select this node again, out and away, out and away. Now, if I want it, well, let's not do that. I'm going to go to the top node, out and away. Oops. That actually makes it easier. node, and I want a node of the stitching, not like I just got a few minutes ago, the node of the drawing. And we're pretty happy with that one. So we're going to click off the design, and now we're going to go in and I'm going to show you up here under this, the design. I have an outline and I have my stitches. All right. With my stitches selected, I can get the control box for the stitches themselves. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the line that says density. I'm going to make my density increase it about six. That's a little bit, eh. we'll leave that. It's not exactly what I'm going for yet because I've got one more stitch control to change. I'm going to go where it says normal, click down, and select contour 2. What that does is contour 2 goes around and follows the outer outline of your stitches. I think I'm going to decrease my density to about 5. That's better. Okay, now I'm going to go to my colors and I'm actually going to change that to a white. Click OK. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to um, object number two and select it. I'm going to come to up to the stitch menu, to the tools, and select fill. It's pretty close to what I want. I was taught early on that you never ever create stitches that run horizontal. Yeah, I don't think that's going to make a difference, but again, I can take the direction line and move it slightly. It's everything on this is perfect. I may want to decrease my density just a little bit, so I'm going to go up to like 4.8. Everything is okay and I'm going to select my color and it is going to turn black. The thread will be black. It's going to be the pupil of this little guy's eye. Here it is and okay. Now looking more like an eye but I have one thing left to do. I want to go and look at the aspect I have it filled. I'm going to take this outline and I am going to apply a straight or a running stitch. I'm in object number one, the first object within that, and I'm going to select from the Stitch Tools Run. I'm going to come to my controls for the stitch, select Double, go to the color, and select Black. This, and OK. Now, it's going to make sense that all of my black objects stitch together, so I'm going to click on that particular object, 
and bring it down here and set it into object number two. Now my black will stitch at the same time and my white will stitch at the same time. Click off, there's my eyeball. I will actually go to File, Save, As, Stitch in Working, and my menu comes up and I'm going to go I, and I'm going to save it to, I don't want to save it to the library, that's something else, Quilting and Sewing, and I'm going to save. Now when I want to actually add it to any other file. I'll simply go back to my file menu, merge stitch file, go to where I saved it, which is always going to be on my computer quilting and sewing, and there I have eyes. I am going to select, this is the Jeff file, it's what I would send to my Janome. This is the BE file, I would probably go ahead and select that. Double click on it, and you can see from the objects menu I have two. Let's zoom out. Sorry. It's probably coming right over that, but if I select everything, one, if I select both parts and drag it. There you go. Here's looking at you. Until next time, I hope you guys have learned something new and the scraps that you make will make a beautiful world. Bye.